Now we review the 2024 film Windigo. Not Wendigo with an E. This is Windigo, as in it wins Digo. I don't even understand that joke. It's probably not funny anyway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a film that popped up. Um, popped up on my radar, and it's not in theaters. It's a direct-to-streaming film. I believe you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on YouTube. I have not checked Tubi, but there are various streaming sites you can get it on, and that is Windigo. That's with an I, not with an E. Okay, that's not to be confused with the 2024 film Windigo, or Wendigo, which has an E. This is Windigo with an I. All right, so... Before I go any further, of course, let me go any. Let me point out that for every thousand subscribers I get, I do purchase one of these bracelets from Four Ocean. Four Ocean pulls a pound of trash out of the ocean every time I do that. I'm trying to make the world better, and I mean that would make our our native population happy, I would assume, because we have lost our connection with the Great Spirit, and the Great Spirit is um, what keeps us whole. So by cleaning the ocean. By being one with nature, by respecting nature, we can all become one with the Great Spirit again. And our society is basically dying of not being one with the Great Spirit. So, uh, that said, Wendigo is basically Pumpkinhead. If you've seen Pumpkinhead, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not seen Pumpkinhead then don't go looking it up because it will spoil things for this movie. But you have, what is going on is that a, uh, a ancient native, I believe this is in Alaska, although I don't think it is ever overtly said, goes missing for a bit, and her Native American family says, okay, but we need to go find out what's going on, and they drive down there to, uh, to look for... Look for her. Uh, look for their grandma. Only it's not grandma because the mom says my grandma called this woman grandma, or my mom called this woman grandma. So we don't know how old she is, but apparently she's pretty old. And then you know the kids are having some trouble. You've got the brother who's being picked on and bullied. He's not a very strong character. He can't really stand up for himself. You've got the sister who's basically whooping his tail, uh, and that would really screw me over, because his sister was reasonably good-looking. So, I mean, I would feel weird wrestling with her, but, you know, if it were my sister, Godzilla should wrestle my sister. So that that's a totally different story. But this chick, I mean, you know, not bad-looking. Wouldn't mind wrestling with her, to be completely honest. Anyway, so, yes, and... The kids get into some trouble with, I believe, their meth dealers, and Grandma proposes a supernatural solution. That is as far as I want to go with the plot. That's essentially the first act. And yes, okay, this movie is a little weak in the first act, and it is a little slow to get going. I will, however, point out that once the monster shows up, that is a well-made monster. I mean, that thing is as scary as whatever monstrosities my sister can conjure when she passes gas. Not as scary as the gas itself, but scary as the monsters that escape when she passes gas. So yes, this is a scary enough monster. If I were in the room with this thing, it would probably scare the heck out of me. But I have been in a room with my sister, so nothing scares me. This creature, I mean... It's your typical big, bad, ugly, bugly. You know, you've got your, your tiny, ugly, buglies, which are generally played by children. You're sort of imps and fairies and gnomes and things. And then you've got your big, bad, ugly, buglies, which are normally depicted about seven feet tall and are big and bad and ugly and bugly. You know, a great example, of course, would be Pumpkinhead. He's pretty tall and he's big, bad, ugly, bugly. And uh, the Xenomorph from Aliens, that's a big, bad, ugly, bugly. And this is a similar big, bad, ugly, bugly. The art design on it uses bone 
and um, sticks, but it does look very much like a living creature. It has living attributes, and you know, I have to say, is fairly effective. There aren't a lot of special effects in this particular movie, and I mean, if you're looking for a horror classic like Silence of the Lambs, which is more of a thriller, but that's neither here nor there. If you're looking for a completely new concept like It Follows, that's not this movie, all right? This movie is not groundbreaking. It is not something that has not been done before. In fact, there are a lot of movies where the monster is the Wendigo. It's kind of an overused concept in Native American film and even horror film to a certain extent, although it does get points for having a completely Native American central cast with um, the Caucasians being side, side characters, which is something you don't see enough of in film. So it gets some points for that, but that may be more of a, you know, hey, in 20 years, those films may not be rare, or maybe those films aren't rare, I just don't have access to them. So that's one of those things, you know. I enjoyed this film. It was a solid horror entry. There's a lot of good things to say about it. It doesn't scare me, but nothing scares me. I mean, you know, look, I've been in real situations where people were going to die. Not a lot scares you after that. You're not jumping at Jason Voorhees anymore uh, after those situations. So I'm, you know, very much jaded when it comes to horror movies, but I do enjoy horror movies, and I have to say... The action was solid. The set pieces were real. This feels like, you know, somebody had access to this environment. They used this environment. And I applaud that. You know, this is a film that definitely belongs on your watch list. I would say upper middle, just above. I mean, if you had the option of seeing this or Lyft, Windigo. If you had your option of seeing, you know, The Beekeeper or Wendigo, I would again say Wendigo. Why? Because I haven't seen The Beekeeper, but it's kind of a generic action film. Whereas this has a little more flavor to it. It's a slightly better than average project, and it's done by smaller filmmakers who really, you know, they could use our help. Now again, if this were free, I would say stream the heck out of it. Watch it twice. This is not free. I believe you have to buy or rent this digitally. And, you know, that does mean that it, it uh, it's a little more wary. If you've got money to burn, definitely go watch this movie. It is a solid enough film. I know it's not getting the best uh, ratings on IMDb. I think it's rated just above Lyft, in fact. Although, understand that this is a very different product. Lyft was essentially a comedy action film, was designed to make you laugh, smile, and have a good time. This is a horror movie, and it is designed to drudge up your deepest fears, like the dark nightmares and being unable to control yourself. So in that range, it is very effective. I mean, when I saw that this movie existed, I really wanted to watch it. Now that I've seen it, I'm glad that I have. It's a solid movie. If you have the opportunity, definitely see it. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. Comments below. I'm Richard. Greetings, folks. Fred the Facehugger here, reminding you to comment, like, and subscribe. And why should you do that? Because for every thousand subscribers, Random Street Theater here will pull a pound of trash out of the ocean. That's through the company Four Ocean. And why? Why do we pull trash out of the ocean? Because your world is dying. Care about your world? Comment, like, and subscribe. It's not that hard.